Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 14 in the book of Revelation. That is season 27. I'm going to call today a nickname from God. So this is on the tail end of Jesus speaking to the church at Pergamum. And he warns them and says, repent. And if not, some things are going to happen. But if you do the right thing, he's going to give you a name and a rock and an invitation. Here's the passage. This is from Revelation chapter 2, and I'm going to start in verse 16. Therefore, repent. If not, I will come to you soon and war against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna. And I will give him a white stone with a new name written on the stone that no one knows except the one who receives it. And that's it for the passage today. That's from Revelation chapter 2. First of all, there's a warning here. So there are some false teacher kind of people here, and he's telling them to repent. Second thing he's doing is for the people that are in the congregation to not tolerate the people that are doing the false teaching. So he's he's rebuking both the false teachers and those that allow the false teachers. And he says, if not, I am coming to you soon. Now, this isn't the second coming. This is a personal, oppositional, weapon-bearing coming, coming of Jesus. Jesus is saying, fix this, or I am coming at you. And I think he means for sure the false uh, teachers and the people that are doing the false behaviors that have resulted from the false teachers, but I think he's also saying it to those who tolerate the people amongst them. So this is not a coming that you want to be waiting for. This is a coming of Jesus that you should dread, and it's a call to a personal war with God. I'm coming to you soon and warring against those that you have incorrectly tolerated. So this is a person, personal discipline for the bad guys and a rebuke for those that should have been standing against the bad guys, against the Lord. So, uh, you know, teaching point, don't let this be you, that the Lord is coming at you and being tolerant of that which you should not have been tolerant of, or frankly, being opposed to God. Because here he promises a personal war with the sword of his mouth and, you know, this cannot be good. All right, so that's for the bad guys. But then he says, but to the conquerors, to, the, to those that finish well, I will give some hidden manna. You remember manna, it's the substance uh, given in the wilderness to sustain them. It's the stuff that sustains and gives life. It reflected his daily presence, his daily provision. And then he says here, it's not a visible bread like the Israelites got, but I'm going to give you an invisible sustenance. So when you hang in there with God, he's going to hang in there with you. And he sustains you so that you can sustain through the difficulties and challenges. So he can preserve you with his presence so you can persevere in the predicaments. So I think it's this intimacy and presence of God that's being reflected here. So the other thing he promises is a white stone. So one gets a white stone. Uh, so in that era, one got a white stone after a race to gain entrance into a reward banquet. Now there's a banquet coming in the marriage feast of the lamb in chapter 19 and uh, apparently, this would be an entrance ticket to it. Now, the marriage feast of the Lamb is, it is an invitation-only celebration. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. So I don't know if you ever run a race like a marathon or something like that. Um, after the race, you get some sort of a token or a wristband or some, some sort of identical thing that you get to go to the, the food tent and you get fruits and snacks and special beverages and you sort of have a, a, a post-race banquet. And I think this is what this is uh, emphasizing. The previous passage talked about 
you know, sort of doing food wrong and being sacrificed to an, uh, an idol. But here we have this participation in this heavenly banquet, and you sort of get this greater perspective here uh, of a party that is coming. And then my favorite part is you get this new name. Now, uh, scholars debate, are we talking about Jesus who has a, has a new name? But the, the interpretation that I favor is that we get a new name that is uh, spoken by the mouth of the Lord. So he gives a, a, a believer, a conqueror, uh, someone that finishes well, a unique identifier. He gives them a nickname. So it's it, maybe it's a, an experience that you've shared, something that you've overcome, an intimacy that you have with him. Um, you know, like in life, there are those who understand what nicknames mean, and then there are those who are kind of outside. And he is inviting us to get a nickname from himself. Uh, Isaiah 65, 15 says that his servants he will call by another name. So I think... God is going to give us a new name. I wonder what the name of the Lord, the name the Lord will call us by. And what he, will he recollect by calling us this name? And what does this name signal from this time forward? And what intimacy does it reflect? So this new name is somehow associated with victory, associated with conquering, finishing the race, uh, associated with a banquet that's coming and associated with an intimacy and a uniqueness and an identifiability. So you get a new name, you get a new stone, and you get a new invitation. Can't wait. See you there. Thanks for listening.